Hello everyone, welcome back to another teardown video and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the AT Games handheld here. This is the Master System version um, and contains something like 26 Master System games. Uh, now I'm assuming this runs off the same technology as the Mega Drive version and they've just put Master System ROMs on instead. But if we go through the games list here, they're all real games and then there's a couple of AT developed games at the end which are terrible. But we've got Sonic Spinball, Alex and the Lost Stars, iTech World, Miracle World, Baku Baku, Columns, Mean Bean Machine, uh, Snail Maze, Sega Chess, Put and Putter, Psycho Fox, Penguin Land, Fantasy Zone the Maze, Fantasy Zone, Dragon Crystal, Super Columns, and then we've got Hangman Sudoku and Sokuban, which are AT developed games. And I'll just click one of them on now so you can just see how terrible they are. And that's literally what you're getting. It's pretty much like a spectrum. So on the side, we have volume button. And we have three buttons, which is what makes me think that this is just uh, the Mega Drive technology inside. Because obviously, Master Systems don't use three buttons. Uh, we then got the menu which will just take us straight back to the start and obviously start button. Um, the controls aren't too bad on this actually and it is a really nice strong and well made machine. Um, it does have some of the same issues that the AT games usually have with the sound but these are my system ROMs on here and they don't run that bad actually. So it's not really, I mean unless you're like somebody who plays one of these games on original hardware constantly you're not really going to notice any difference in the sounds and it's going to be perfectly fine. This also has earphone jack and a video output on there. Now this video output is only mono sound and a lot of devices now come with stereo sound outputs or at least a split sound. With well, this won't, if you plug it in you'll just get nothing on the screen so you only need like a yellow and white cable lead for this which does come with the console but I've picked this one up because I've had one of these previously but I'll pick this one up second hand um, so it hasn't come with a box or anything uh, so I think what I'm going to do is when we tear it down I think I might do a mod and turn it into the split audio channel so we can plug um, a proper composite cable lead into there then instead of having to rely on just a two lead one because as I said you plug the one with the two sound channels in and on the connection there's a three or four instead of two or three uh, I think yes yeah, four instead of three so it doesn't connect properly but yeah we'll go through that in a separate video but let's take it apart and see what this bad boy is made of right so we've took it apart now and it was just the four screws here and then I've took the battery compartment out as well and you have to be careful because the volume switch will fall out when you first open it and there's a wire connecting a speaker which is very short uh, so if we just be careful there and turn it round and there we have our flash chip which will be storing all our games and here is our EEPROM chip which I'm a bit surprised as this actually has um, markings to put an actual chip on there but they've gone for the EEPROM route so that's some writing on there model GP120 digital media cartridge limited hmm now you see from the thing is from here this will be much easier to add a cartridge slot into it because they've left all the pins out here the connections for a chip to go in we can literally just see where every trace to the board goes and because we can see directly where they've gone to the flash chip this will be relatively easy to get a cartridge slot plugged up to it so that is going to be a nice little mod that I'm going to try Let's take the board out and see what's on the other side. 
I'm assuming not a lot. I'm assuming it'll just be the screen. There's a few screws on this side. But yeah, um, as I say, it's not a bad little system. These do fetch uh, quite a decent price as well. Still, I think, I think now you're talking about 30 quid. And second hand, you're still talking about 20, I believe. I didn't pay that, I picked it up for dirt cheap. Oh. Right, that's all out. Can we get the board out now? Yes, it just lifts. Right, so here we go. Right, so as we see, on this side, all we have is our controller markings. Oh, that's a bit strange. As you see there, the buttons for select and start are actually soldered in pressure pads, which I've never actually seen before. On, on Well, not on a clone console anyway so I'm, I'm a bit surprised why they've used it for them and not everything else hmm that's strange we've got our LCD screen here with a standard connection on they haven't soldered that that is socketed so that's quite decent you would be able to uh, find compatible screens maybe bigger ones there's quite a lot you can do to this really and it's all pretty much marked out with all the markings This is actually a really nicely designed bit of kit. So I'm quite impressed. I'm not sure what this is here. Looks a bit weird. What's on the other side? Ah, oh, right, it's the battery connector. I'm not sure why it comes through like that, though. So, yeah, that's pretty much the inside of it. Let's put that back together. Oh, let's get them screws out first. Uh, and then we'll have a quick run through of some of the other games, but because these are just straightforward Master System games, I'm not going to uh, try and review any of the games or anything like that. Because you can e easily just YouTube and there'll be millions and millions of videos of the games on here. Um, but if you do have any specific question about how a certain game operates, then let me know. And if necessary, I will get some gameplay of that game done. And I'm going to struggle now because I don't have a magnetic screwdriver with me. And it's going to take me forever to get these tiny little screws back in. But yeah, I'm quite happy that we're going to be able to do quite a lot with this. Because for those who've been watching my teardowns for a while, you'll know that a long, 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 long time ago, I started doing a mod to add cartridge slot on Famiclones without a cartridge slot. And I have pretty much done it. Um, but I hit a, a problem where I couldn't find out a couple of the uh, traces. And I struggled that with a while, so I shelved the problem for quite some time. And then I started working on it again. And now I'm starting to get back into modding because life isn't as hectic as it was. I've got a bit more free time. So I'm starting to do a lot of these mod videos again. So hopefully I can jump on this as a project soon and get some super duper mods done. I mean this here, this flash chip is used in a lot of clones, AT game stuff. Uh, so I mean you could probably just lift a Mega Drive 80 clones chip and solder it straight in here and it would it would run without a problem because I'm assuming I mean Mega Drive uh, emulators usually run mass system software anyway because pretty much built on the same technology so so yeah I, I wouldn't see them developing a whole new system they just rebrand and put mass system ROMs on Yeah, not a not much else to say about it really. I mean, we've got some general 
electronics parts. I think that might be a video chip there. Or will it be sound? Where's the video output? The video out's there. So yes, I would think that would be... I'll get that zoomed in and then I'll check it out what it is. Because I can't actually see that writing at the minute. There we go. There's the chip. But yeah, I think that'll probably be the video chip or... Well, it's definitely the video or the sound chip. It's one of them. Uh, but yeah. What have we got up here? Bansan BS6. Well, there's... Doesn't seem to be a... Oh, there is a date there. 2008. 26th for the 4th, so 26th of April 2008, this one was made. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. Going to get this back in. This will be the tricky part, getting the volume, put them back in. Because not only do you have to get it in the right place, you have to make sure it's on the button as well. Otherwise you're just going to be sliding nothing. And that's right. So let's put this back together and then we'll run through some of the games. Right, so we're all back together and as I said I'm not gonna try and go through every game because these are all just standard uh, Master System games but what I'll do is I'll just take a, a pick of a couple of them we'll go with Alex Kidd in Miracle World because everybody knows that one So as you'll see, this is running the 60 frames a second version, the NTSC version. So it's hard for me to play here because I'm playing Cybers. Uh, but you can see the screen's nice, nice quality. Uh, the picture isn't amazing because obviously it's mass system games, but it's still... Oh, I don't know, thought I'd push reset button there. Oh, but um... Oh, crikey. Let's get to a different game. Uh, Psycho Fox. So yeah, it's pretty much running uh, just as good. But you might notice some slight tinniness in the sound. But as I said, it's, it's not really that bad. Oops, I've never actually played this game. But yeah, um, I mean, for the price it might be a little bit steep uh, when there's the Mega Drive version out there which is pretty much the same price and contains more games. But the emulation on the Mega Drive isn't as good as this. But then the games on this aren't as good as Mega Drive games, so you know there's trade-offs between everything. So I think ideally, if if you're not uh, gonna notice like the difference, oh, Snail Maze. This is actually the game that was the secret game on the original Master System ones. You just do have to hold down a series of buttons, and then you get this secret game. But yeah, um, as I was saying, if if you're not hardcore gamer and like notice these little differences with the sound and stuff like that, then you'll never have a problem with it, and it's worth getting. Uh, so yeah, if you can find one cheap, I mean, as I said, like second, and they still go for about twenty quid, which to say there's not a great amount of games might be a bit steep. But then I think I'm talking like pound a game, so it's not that bad really. But there are better alternatives. But it's still a great little system, and um, probably, I guess so far as they're saying, the best AT game system, maybe, handheld at least, maybe. Maybe not, I don't know. That I think they do the one with an SD card slot in, which I haven't opened up, I don't think I've got one of them. Uh, so I'll look at trying to get one and see what they perform like, because they will obviously play mass system games out the box as well. Uh, so we'll try and see about getting one of them. But yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video where I either destroy it or get some awesome little mods done.
So yeah, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I'll see you on the next teardown video. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo.